Hello to everyone. Welcome today to this presentation. My name is Anna Burejanova. I am UX designer in Visma Enterprise OU. And today I want to talk about how to build user-centric products, aka how to make a products which people love, use and need. But let me start with a story. So once upon a time, there was a company with a great vision for their product. They put down, they wrote down all specifications for that product. They started to put together a team. And in this team, there was a, all possible knowledge and skills which are needed for creating the greatest product ever. There was a product manager, there was a product owner, there were designers, developers, everyone who is needed for this job. And after that, the team started to build this product. They spent the months, maybe even year, maybe even years on this product. And when the product was ready, the company organized a big lunch party and the product went on the market. And the whole company, the whole team was waiting for that big success of the company and of the product. Unfortunately, no one bought the product. No one. Income was a zero. The company started to think, where did we make a problem? Where, why this happened? And unfortunately, I would be more than happy to tell you that this is just some fairy tale which you can tell to your kids before going to sleep. But this is a reality of hundreds, maybe thousand companies and products all over the world. This company, this team and all of these companies, all of these teams, they forgot about one crucial thing which is needed to create a really product which people want. And it is talk to people. To be honest, I could already stop my presentation here because to be user-centric is really about talking to people, but I am pretty sure that you want to hear a little bit more. So let's dive in. So what we will cover today, we will a little bit talk about what is it user-centricity, how we can understand to it, then of course, the importance of user research, that absolutely gorgeous, magical word. Then we will look at some case studies. Theory is really nice, but every time it's better to have some real life example. Every time when you are using any methods, any tool, any, any approach, there are coming some challenges. So we will also a little bit talk about them. And at the end, little conclusion, little summary, what we talk about. So, the first topic, what is user-centricity? Absolutely gorgeous word. I could tell easily, so it's, it's only about putting users at the core of design. So it means that users are really like a heart of the whole product development process. And it's needed that users are in the process as soon as possible, but also as often as possible. There is this great philosophy behind user-centered design that uh, it's not just designing for users, but it is designing with them. They are part, they are your colleagues almost, they are your family throughout this product development process. The good thing, which came from a user-centered design, if company is using, so the company or the product can really stand out in a market. And we know that the nowadays market is flooded with different options, with different products. And sometimes it's really like a hard to get through. And everyone knows, happy user, loyal customer. And what each company wants, each company wants loyal customers. So here you are. Here's a definition. I absolutely love definition. So let's take this. So user-centric design, aka UCD, is an iterative design process in which designers focus on the users and their needs in each phase of the design process. In UCD, design teams involve users throughout the design process via a variety of research and design techniques to create highly usable and accessible products for them. This is a definition by the Interaction Design Foundation. You should definitely check this. But I can imagine this definition is pretty hard to understand, even sometimes to me, so let's make it easy. So, the, far, the first part of this definition is about user-focused. As I mentioned 
before, it's really like about users. It's uh, if you want to create some product which your users or potential users will use, will love, will need, you need to firstly understand what my user need, what my user normally uh, prefer, but, uh, what he loves. And definitely to understand what is the problem that user is trying uh, to solve. Next thing in, that, uh, in the definition is that user-centered design is iterative. It's something which is going through the whole, uh, whole process when developing some product. It's starting already when you are designing, when you have even some idea for designing something. So firstly, you need to be sure, is this idea good? Is this design good enough? You have to test it with the users. Based on the feedback that you are getting from users or potential users, you are refining design, you are refining product, and then repeat. So you are again putting it in front of users, test it. Again, getting feedback, refine it, and it's never ending cycle. And the third part of this definition is about that it's collaborative. So one thing which I absolutely love, it's uh, when we are talking about user-centered design, it's not about that we are creating just for users. It's about we work with our users. So users are part of the whole journey from the beginning until the end. And users are not only that destination at the end of our journey. And another thing, it's impossible that you are doing user-centered design alone. This approach, there is a must that the whole team is using this approach. The whole team is in contact with users. The whole team is uh, collecting feedback, analyzing feedback, and getting, learning, and uh, refining the product. The next thing is user research. It's uh, it's really like a no. Let's check the definition first. So, user research or user experience research is the systematic investigation of your users in order to gather insights that will inform the design process. This is a definition by the Kerry Foundry, another uh, resource which is uh, really worth to check. Let's look a little bit into the what is it about what this user research means. So firstly, why we need to do user research. So the main purpose of user research is really understand users. We are doing user-centered design, so we need to firstly understand to our users. As I mentioned before, we need to understand or we, we need to uh, research what are their needs, what what is their behavior? What is this experience that they are looking for? What are their motivation? And really like a found out what is the problem? So then we can create a solution so we solve our user's problem. And of course, that uh, because of the research, we reduce the risks of building the wrong solution. And as I said at the beginning, there is uh, so many companies that are creating great products. Unfortunately, no one wants this product. So Throughout the research, we can reduce this risk of creating something which our users or potential users want. Also, I mentioned that uh, user research is not a one-time event. It's, I absolutely love continuous research. It really means that from the beginning until the end, all the time when you are designing something, when you are creating something, you are talking with your users, even when the product is done, you still collect that feedback and you are still trying to improve the product. Then there is a question how you could do user research. So there is these two great words, qualitative versus quantitative. It sounds maybe pretty scary, but it's really easy to understand. Uh, quantitative means when you are, for example, checking analytics of your product, you realize that 20% of my users is using this feature. So it is quantitative, it's some fact, it's like number that you know how many users is using something. But you will definitely ask why only 20% of users or why 80% of my users is not using this feature. And here comes qualitative research. It's really about asking easily why this feature is not good for you or why this feature is so good for you. You can ask uh, anything what you need to know. 
there is also different uh, methods and tools how to do research such as interviews, uh, survey, usability studies, uh, ethnographic studies and definitely tens, maybe even hundreds more. But if you are at the beginning of your journey or if you are just trying to get into this product development field or even if you are an entrepreneur and you have some idea what you could uh, design, what you could product, at the beginning you need two things and it's really your mouth and curious mind. And I will show you how does this, this work. I will immediately uh, tell you one example. Imagine that you have a, or maybe you have a dog at home and you spend a lot of hours per day in the office and your dog, your little cutie, is unfortunately home alone. So you came with this idea that what about that there would be some mobile application that the dog owner could book some, for example, uh, some neighbor or, or anyone and this person could take my dog out or this uh, person could play with my dog during the time that I'm office. It's a great idea, but because you attended this even Mimit Koda and you were listening during this presentation about user-centric design, so you know that firstly is coming user research. So what do you do? You go out, you stop a first person and you ask, hey, I can see you have a dog. Would it be possible to ask you a few questions? And then you are continuing. Is this idea good? Is this bad? You are getting more information. Who could be these users? And what you can get from any type of this user research is definitely that um, you can be sure that your solution or your idea align with actual user needs. So you are sure that this is something what users will need. And here comes also the question with who you should do user research. Who should you ask? So it really depends what is your idea. In this case, about that mobile application for a dogs, I would tell that the primary uh, group is definitely dog owners. But it can be anyone else. It can be people who are interested to be that, that person who is taking care of the dog. So every time you need to think, with who do I need to talk? Is it with actual users who are using my product right now? Is it about potential users? So this is a question which are definitely coming uh, to your mind. The main thing is that end goal of the user research. And I can... I am 100% sure that if you if you talk with users, you are getting this uh, uh, you are getting this information answer on your question. You can be sure that what you are creating is some product, service, anything, which people will love. They need it, and it will be easy to use for them, and it will solve their problems. So it's the great thing about user-centered design. Now let's look at some real examples, real bird examples, because as I mentioned, theory is good. Examples are better. I chose these three. So first is Spotify and Netflix. Uh, I am pretty sure you can remember. I hope that I am not that old alone here, but 10, 15 years ago, when your favorite music band uh, really some new album, you were waiting in the line in front of the shop, you were waiting when the shop is getting to be open so you can buy this album. Or you were uh, buying one song per two euros from an Apple store. Or you were waiting to borrow some VHS or to borrow or buy some DVD. You needed to in, in advance to figure out what do you want. After that came Spotify and Netflix. So nowadays, because they use user-centric design, they were talking with users, potential users and potential customers. They found out that the best way for users, what they need, is that they will pay monthly some subscription. Then they will sit on the sofa. They can listen anything what is coming to their mind, even like a try something new. Or then they can just open the TV and choose, do I want a movie? Do I want a series? Do I want a documentaries? Whenever. The third example is Vilma, Finnish uh, educational platform, is the product where I work and we are really using this user-centered design. We are regularly in contact with our users, we are collecting feedback, we want to know 
how our product work how is it good is it is it, is there everything what our users need but also we are trying to find out what else we could do because we want that their everyday life related to school is easier and i can tell one example it's straight from our kitchen so uh, when we talk with the users, we are at this point, my team is working on redesigning the messaging platform within Vilma. And we got a feedback that there must be definitely feature when it's possible to forward the message. It was, yeah, straight feedback. Without it, we will not use it almost. But we wanted to know a little bit more. What is it behind? What is the problem? And we get the feedback that the reason is that when someone starts some discussion there is uh, more people and then just one person realized hey there should be also this teacher or there should be this parent and from that reason there is no need only for forwarding message but there is a need for bringing a new person into the message thread a new feature is there as I also mentioned, there is a lots of challenges with user-centered design, so I think that this will be good to a little bit prepare you what can what can come into your way. So first problem, it's I would tell every time when <laughs> developing some products, it's really about resources. Uh, you have every time when you need to do some user research, when you need to talk with users, and you should every time, as soon as possible, as, as often as possible, there is a time and there is a money. So you have to really like think, what is that compromise? How much time can I spend on this? What is that enough? When is this that right now I have enough information? And also how much money do I need? Then definitely it's sometimes coming the stakeholder resistance. Ellie, you can hear pretty often this sentence, do we need it? we know what our users want. Unfortunately, it's almost every time wrong. We really don't know what other people be, people want. So it's really needed, again, to make a compromise, to talk with the stakeholders and to persuade them why it's uh, needed to do uh, research. Then definitely recruitment difficulty. So where can I find my users? There's a different approaches, different possibilities. It's possible to make a user panel. It's possible to ask uh, in a different uh, discussion groups, in Facebook groups, or even you can go to coffee place just to ask their people. Then my favorite, analysis paralysis. It's really often when you collect all of this information, you put everything down in some, uh, in, uh, in some paper or in a computer, you found out that I have so much information. Where should I start? Is this important, that important? So you really need to find that first step, how to move on, how to start this analysis. Then conflicting feedback, of course, everyone is special everyone is uh, I would tell there is no existing something like average user or traditional user it's not existing so it can come to your uh, it can come to your way that there is a one feedback and another feedback is totally different so you need to really like a find that the same or uh, some compromise how to put these feedbacks together and then definitely potential biases I think that everyone is somehow biased. Everyone can a little bit think, I am, I think I know. No, you know nothing. You have to really like uh, put your mind into the open, I would tell almost empty space. You just need to remember what I need to find out and then to ask everything around, but you really can't be biased in advance. So as a conclusion, four steps. I have just 52 seconds, great. So first is definitely call to action. So the user-centered design, it's about that we want to make our users uh, happy. We want that they are using our product. Then is definitely about commitment. Uh, it means that users are part of, of it. They are not just like final destination. Then it's collaborative effort. So as I also mentioned, is a team game. Everyone is on it and users are part of it. And then it's iterative process from the beginning until the end. The end is never coming. It's never ending uh, process. So the users are the part of the journey the whole time. 
And here I just put three great resources. First is absolutely gorgeous curse uh, for anyone who wants to get into the field and then two books. Thank you very much.